then uh, lift up off of the exhaust. All right guys, today I'm gonna show you how to remove a timing chain from a K24. This procedure should be the same thing for a K20. Let's get to work and we're gonna need a uh, 10 millimeter. We gotta zip off your whole valve cover right here. Take this thing off first. And then we need to come to this timing cover and remove some 10 millimeter bolts on that. that top piece off right there that plastic piece thing is a 10 millimeter we need to remove this 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 that and then the two in the back so all right valve covers off you guys can see the whole pretty much assembly right here so primarily i think i left this thing on tdc already yeah it's already on top that center um you guys can see the punch marks in the back right here well you can't really see them but if I zoom in right there those you should be able to insert pins in each one of those when it's TDC your cams will be aligned now we can go ahead and remove the chain case cover right here 12 10 millimeter bolts that are gonna hold this cover on your 10 millimeters in where the VTC solenoid is right there you guys can remove those right there. There's two tens that hold that into place. Obviously, you need to have your crank removed. You need to have your crank removed from the beginning to get this cover off. So be sure to, before you proceed on any further than here, be sure to have your crank removed. Crank moved, basically first. And then you want to have your motor mount that removed out of the way. Two 10 millimeters that are on the bottom, they're different than the rest. They have like this middle section. It's like a, a cylinder piece here compared to just the regular shape. Keep those separated. You guys will probably have three uh, connecting from your oil pan into the cover. I already removed mine, so just be sure to remove those three at the bottom. ETC solenoid carefully. Uh, we can remove our chain case cover here before i proceed any further guys i just want to let you know that it, it's going to make your life a lot easier if you have the basically tensioner the oem tensioner little tool here the pin that you could put in the auto tensioner and you get yourself a nice pair of these uh, these alignment pins and these are for the back camshafts and then these are for any timing job basically you do cam swap uh, you know new timing chain job tensioner job whatever just the reassurance to make sure that your cams do not move when you're doing messing with the chain or tensioner because it can happen I've seen it happen I've almost had it happen to me basically another tool i recommend for this job that we're going to be using is an extension and we're going to need a magnetic spark plug socket i'm going to be doing is cylinder number one spark plug out of the chamber there so that i can insert this extension down into my chamber to let me know when the piston rises all the way to top dead center I just want to use a breaker bar or a ratchet with a 19 millimeter socket so you can put it on your crank bolt there at the bottom because we're going to be rotating this thing around. Essentially what we're trying to do is find top dead center. So as the marks are aligning up right here on the cams, you can see that the uh, rod is going up. Basically want to get it until those punch marks are horizontal so these are horizontal right there it's hard to see but there's an arrow on the crank you guys can kind of see it right there and that is aligned with the arrow that's on the block itself right there so we're good right now and the piston up here as you guys saw, don't mind all the shakiness guys, I'm using my phone. Piston, I don't know if you guys can see down in the uh, cylinder wall there, you probably can't. But the piston's all the way at the top right now. But let's remove this crank bolt right here. 
this piece right here, this key, this gear slides right out. And you guys want to make sure that you, when you put it back in, the outside basically faces towards the outside of the motor, so towards you. Now you can see the bottom crank mark is aligned. The punch marks are horizontal from each other. What we're going to do now, we need to basically uh, compress. We need to lock in this spring right here, this lever on the tensioner. And how we're going to do that is we're going to rotate the crank counterclockwise. Okay. When the crank is being counterclockwise rotated, you can see the orange tab moving up. Okay. Right there. Pretty much want to go until you can see the hole inside of that orange link right there. Once you see that hole, we can put our little pin in there, okay? And now to make sure that pin does not fall out, now we can go clockwise to tighten that thing up a little bit. Marks are still TDC. Okay. That's tight, shouldn't be able to, we can go a little bit tighter with it, but. The alignment pins come into effect, guys. So we're gonna come behind here, right? And we're gonna find our holes. So here's a hole right there. Okay, so that locked in. All right, now we can take our, uh, our tensioner off, and that is gonna be 10 millimeter, guys. One of the bolts is out. You could see this guide drop back right here. So now that we want to be careful not to drop any bolts into the oil pan. I should have put a little paper towel in there or whatnot, but I'm backing this thing out slowly. Kind of hold on to both the, uh, the screw and the tensioner at the same time. You could just back it off like so, guys. So there's the tensioner. And there's the chain. Look at all that floppiness, guys, huh? That's why it's easy to come off the bottom crank. When you're doing this, when the engine's in the car, you'll never see what this is like looking like. Look at that. There's so much play under there. It's so easy for this thing to come off the sprocket. Literally, it's just dangling. Oh, what I usually do, I leave this guide hanging right here. I always either remove the top one first or this one right here. So, I mean, in this instance, we'll just remove this one right here because it's not that big of a deal. These are all 10 millimeters as well, guys. All right, she's off, guys. These are uh, two 12 millimeters at the top for the top guide. Go ahead and break those free. Get these off so we can remove this top guide here. Allen wrench, get yourself an Allen wrench. You're gonna have to match up the hole here. That's it guys. She's basically done. So uh, we can remove it from, I'd probably go from the top. Just take your, uh, your chain, lift up, get it off of, uh, take your chain lift up off of the VTC actuator then uh, lift up off of the exhaust, and then simply just right over the bottom. So there you guys have it. That's how you do a uh, timing chain removal on a uh, K20 or a K24. You guys can see everything's still lined up. I just wanted to make this video for you guys. You know, I'm not an expert by any means, but um, you know, I see a lot of videos, like or attempt to look at a lot of videos, a K series. And not a lot of people are like super descriptive or informative. You know, they just show you, just show you like how to time the car, like where the mark should be when the chain's already on. Like, dude, people don't really want to see that. They want to see you putting the chain on pretty much. But uh, yeah, I just wanted to make a video for you guys. Hopefully this helps, you know, some of you guys out. It should be the same process for the K20. Like I said, uh, this is the JDM K24A. This process helped you. Definitely be sure to give me a like, guys. If this video does good, I'll make a uh, timing chain installation. They're close to getting this thing swapped very soon. All I'm waiting on is for my new chain, my new tensioner. That was just old crap that I used to tinker around with this and test my skills and stuff. So, yeah, be sure to give me a like, guys. Drop your comments down below and uh, subscribe for more content. I'll see all of you in the next video. And remember... Never stop.
wrenching. 